Hey guys, God bless you all. So I have a word for us today, but before I jump into it, let me just pray for us. Father God, just come to you now, Lord, and we just want to honor you, for you are holy and worthy to be honored, worthy to be praised, Lord, worthy to be worshipped. Thank you, Lord, that you created us to worship you. It is such a joy and such an honor to be able to worship you, Lord. And it's an honor to be able to get together, whether it be in person or on these videos, and just speak of you, the King who is worthy. Lord, I pray that all hearts and ears and eyes are open to hear what the Spirit is trying to speak through this message today, Lord. I ask you now to please anoint my vessel, Holy Spirit. Please remove me and let only your words proceed out of my mouth. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, so the Lord says, I am raising up a generation of worshipers. I'll tell you again, the Lord says, I am raising up a generation of worshipers. In case you've been consumed by the many things of this world and you haven't noticed, revival is knocking at the door. In fact, revival is actually already begun in many places all over America and all over the world. Just a quick YouTube search. I mean, just YouTube revival, you know, Christian revival, and you will find so many different videos of revival all over America, all over the world. Signs, miracles, wonders, people being set free. People in wheelchairs that are walking, y'all, and this stuff is not fake. This stuff is not made up. This is this is what we see in the Bible. It's all in the Bible. And God, it's not a new thing God is doing, y'all. God's not doing a new thing. He's doing the same thing. The church has just been asleep for a while, and now he's waking us up. And he says, I'm raising up a generation of worshipers. The Bible says that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Hallelujah. All right, let me get back to my notes. So there will come a day when we will all be in heaven for eternity, worshiping the King of Kings. Nothing of this world will remain, not your job, not your home, not your car, um, not your money, not your title, none, none of it. You can't take any of it to heaven with you. So what are you worshiping while you're here on earth? Think about it. Just take a minute to think. What are you worshiping? Is it Jesus, the only one who is worthy to be worshipped? Or are you spending more time worshiping your money, your status, another person, or maybe something else? The Bible says you cannot serve two masters. You must choose. When you become a Christian, you are to lay down your old life and follow the Holy Spirit's leading. You are no longer your own. We were made by God and for God. He created us to worship Him above all else. And God's worship is so much more than just a song, like it really is. We are called to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Can you honestly say that you are doing that? Worshiping the Lord with all of your heart and all that you say and do? I mean, can you really say that? And guys, I'm, I'm talking to myself too here. So if we look at John 4, 23 through 24, the Bible says, But a time is coming, and even now has arrived. When the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For such people, the Father seeks to be his worshipers. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. So God is looking for a people, for a generation that will lay down this world, will lay this world aside and put him first. He doesn't need any more lukewarm Christians. I promise you, the Lord already has plenty of those. He says, I'm looking for someone who wants to be set on fire for me, 
who wants to seek me first. I am looking for chain breakers, demon slayers, someone I can pour my spirit into, someone willing to be a vessel for me. I do not want perfection, says the Lord. I just want your heart. Hallelujah. And the Lord says someone needs to hear this, this right here. Lord, I pray that they can hear this and accept it in Jesus' name. When God raises up the younger generation, do not tell them to go back to sleep like Eli told Samuel in 1 Samuel 3. If you're not familiar with that story, please read it. It's a pretty short story. Um, Obey the voice of the Lord, y'all, and rise, rise, says the Lord. Come alive in Jesus' name. Come alive. And remember, most importantly, Jesus should always be the center. Always. He has to be the only one receiving all the glory because no one else is worthy. We don't need any glory hawks. So, Lord Jesus, I just pray that you bless each person who watched this video, Lord. I thank you. I thank you for the words that you speak through your children. They are so encouraging and sometimes so convicting. But I know you only convict us because you love us. And we love you too, Lord. All glory and honor be unto you forever and ever, our precious King. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you guys.